Nusra Ahmed and I'm the lead curator of the South Asia Gallery at Manchester Museum. I'm Emily Hannam, I'm the project curator for South Asia at the British Museum, but I've been um, supporting Manchester Museum and the South Asia Gallery Collective on the co-curation project to create this new South Asia Gallery. Well, we've been involved in the project since from the very beginning, and you might know that it's evolved in many ways <laughs> over the years. So the initial idea was back in about 2015, mm -hmm. um, when Nick Merriman was the director of Manchester Museum, and Neil McGregor was the director of the British Museum. And originally, it was about sharing the British Museum's incredible collection of South Asian art and material culture with the widest possible audience and um, you know, particularly um, reaching audiences in uh, you know, wider than London and the UK. And the original plan that it was going to be more of a British Museum style gallery mm -hmm. in Manchester. Um, and there were, there were conversations with many members of the local community, but it, it was going to be a very different gallery. And then Esme Ward became director of Manchester Museum in 2018, and she had a very different vision. Mm. Yeah. And the British Museum were on board with that. Do you want to talk about? Esme? Yeah, I think Esme, when Esme came on board, she kind of halted the project and she asked herself questions like, "Are we being as imaginative and inclusive as we should be? And who who does this gallery serve? And how, can we do it a different way?" And the British Museum were already partners, so it was kind of navigating that relationship as well. Um, and fully behind it, fully yeah. on board. Uh, yeah, it took us five years until we got there. Yeah. Really so the British Museum have done partnership galleries before across the UK, mm. but this is our first co-curated <laughs> partnership gallery. And it was very ambitious. And it's become ambitious. I think, yeah. Yeah. The ambition has grown yeah. and grown, yes. and you know, that all the hard work has been worth it. So in 2018 when Esme came on board and that inclusive and imaginative idea came into her head, there was a, a launch of the South Asia Gallery at the Vermilion Manchester. Um, so I was not part of the museum then um, and we had a, an email that just said you're invited to this meal and you'll get to hear about plans for Manchester Museum. That was it, I just went to the meal, thought, oh, nice meal, go to the meal. Um, but it's what was said at that meeting, it was an open call to say, we want you to be involved in how you shape this gallery and what this gallery is. Um, and from then, there was uh, two workshops, um, about 80 people in each workshop. So people who'd gone to this event were community leaders, councillors, artists, creatives, just wanted to kind of have a feel for what's happening. Those two workshops, we were asked, what is it that you want to do? And we all said, we want to share stories. We want it to be a story-led gallery. And it came really early, uh, earlier in the process that this will be a story-led gallery. No, what's kind of like at the back of your mind, what would tell that story? Would it be an object? Would it be A, B? There was no discussions about then. It was about the themes. And the themes were originally 12, but they, Twelve themes that we worked under, certain people were placed under themes. About 60 people in the process then. Um, a new design team. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. It was really nice, just actually, it was really nice just coming into the museum because not many people, I, I never used to come into the museum, and it was just nice to sit on a really nice space with big leather sofas and just to talk to other people. And that's where all the conversations happen. Uh, go a bit fast forward and we've got 12 anthologies and a new design team coming on board and they really worked um, all the, their, basically they worked their magic to make 12 become 6 without eradicating any stories. So the, the, the anthology themes are quite broad. Um, we have past and present, lived environments, science and innovation, sound music and dance, British Asian and movement and empire and people were placed in the uh, associated anthology. People who, who have been on the journey and stayed on the journey and right up to I think 2020 
people who've come on to the journey and obviously uh, the gallery you can have schedules and uh, design deadlines we wanted to, to stay organic and I think we've stayed organic to the end because Serena's story didn't come in until right at the end mm. about the jewellery mm. so we never turned anyone away it was an open space and we wanted it to continue to be inclusive but there had to be a, a kind of marking point about these are the stories and this is what we'll take forward and that's what's then created this core group of 30 people co-curators and um, asking them that question and uh, the aspiration to have change and to not go to a space where you're not represented and for me it was if I'm gonna hear about South Asian history it's got to be from a South Asian lens and that has to change so that was the aspiration that was the ambition and that's what we've carried through so it's about change we need a change Because there's nowhere like, nowhere like this and I've lived in Manchester all my life and I've never seen myself represented apart from an odd day in Diwali or in Iftar and it's always been Bangra, Bindi and Henna and there's so much more in South Asia Roti than and Chai. Yeah. <laughs> Chai. We have um, temporary platforms and then we're wiped out again and I felt that it was a parachute system of um, institutions coming, taking, presenting, deleting. This is where we make our mark and I think this is where future generations will be able to see themselves in the figures like in science and innovation. It's not about Einstein all the time, there are South Asian figures that you need to know about because although they don't tell you in school, you can find out about it in the South Asian gallery and I think that's when People, young people will embrace their heritage um, and they'll know who they are because they can see themselves. Mm -hmm. and just and not just for mentioning either. This is it's not just for mentioning, it's not even just for South Asians. Mm. I think anyone can come into this gallery and each of the themes they can see themselves reflected in there. It's important because it's for us as South Asians, it's a representation that we've not been had access to. So one of the, the example, examples I can give you is past and present and the excavation of the dancing girl. So quite a lot of people know about the dancing girl, although I didn't because I'm not a historian and, and I've learned so much on this process as well. But Samar wanted to tell that story because first of all, what the dancing girl represented and, and about the excavation find. So it's not the lone white man in the Indiana Jones costume who gets portrayed everywhere. What about all the local archaeologists that were part of that find and can we tell their story? So it was about telling stories that are already there but telling them in a different perspective and including the real people. The Manchester Museum has shown ancient Egyptian ancient yeah. Greek artifacts since, you know, for a very, very long time. They have now an amazing display of ancient Indian um, artefacts. We're just connecting the two to today, so... And I this civilization was yeah. only discovered mm -hmm. 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. Why? Why is it only... And the, for instance, on the stone seals from the British Museum's collection that are on display, the writing still has not been deciphered. Mm -hmm. So hieroglyphs has been deciphered. Mm -hmm. The Indus script has. Mm -hmm. And it's just, and it's because well, why is that? It's because you have how many Egyptologists across the world and how many um, people are we'll studying the Indus civilization on that. Um, we'll decide. <laughs> well, hopefully one day one someone will. Oh, it was really important. I was already doing this kind of work in the community before I joined the museum. So for me, um, my parents came in the 60s. We were the first uh, generation British born, so I didn't have aunts and uncles, I didn't have grandparents, I didn't have cousins, and we lived in this little bubble of that was life outside the front door, and this was life inside, and mum and dad were really traditional, but at the same time, 
couldn't have brought their South Asian-ness back with them because it was British to do certain things. Um, my mum's an amazing seamstress, but she didn't pass those skills on to us because is it? Oh, you can buy shop bought and. So all of those things, I always say we're the lost generation because we didn't know where we fit in. We, I went back to Pakistan when I was 18 and looked at like an outsider. I felt an outsider in the UK, so not quite fitting in anywhere. Um, and not having that social network of a family behind you and an extended family. So kind of lost sometimes and had to choose bits of my identity that way and pick up and lose. This gallery, if it was around then, exactly what you said, I would have brought my kids up differently, I would have showed them a completely different perspective. I wouldn't have seen South Asia when I was 18, I would have seen it when I was younger. I would have gone to places like museums and art galleries. Um, so it's really important that we have this, that, that we can continue that. And it's not about, oh, we need to connect to our roots, we need to connect. It's much more than that. It's part of us. It's, it's our identity and why should we have to give that up just because you don't want to present it? Well, you present it, we'll present it, not you present it, we'll present it, we'll present it on our terms and that's what I want this gallery to do. And the project space behind me is, that's the evolving space, that's when people continue to evolve it because your identity and your heritage, is never, it's never like stood still, it continues as you continue. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just really important and it needed to be done. I think I said in a speech yesterday, it's long overdue and we shouldn't pat ourselves on the back and say, well, we've done a South Asia gallery. We should have done it years ago because we've been here for years and we do, we do belong here. So don't make spaces where we don't belong. gallery is definitely Manchester because of the diversity that we have in Manchester and I think it's about having key players that have created the change like Esme Ward um, like the shift from a curator with the um, museum background and someone to having the lived experience like me to take on this project you don't get that in every museum and so it's about bringing everyone together but it is I think it is a we are at the forefront of something in museum practice where co-curation yeah. is evolving from small individual displays to like much larger scale and ambition. Which is awesome. I learned everything new. I am I'm, I'm, so, I'm so humble and embarrassed at the same time. I can't say on camera. I didn't even know in this valley was like where it sits in the world and you know Pakistan is where the dancing girl was excavated it's you know modern day Pakistan since Mahindra and I was like gosh that is part of me and I did not know and yeah I've just learned so much I'm still learning you know for me innovation is like you know I come from an art background and so that was a real revelation to me it's Anna Mani who's yeah. uh, a an Indian meteorologist and everything I've seen or come across, and I just want to go and see it with my eyes now, basically. And I just want everyone else to kind of be on this journey with us now and understand the, the hidden stories that we were never told. And yeah, I hope, it, I hope it actually changes quickly. I hope it gets to that stage where things do change because people need to be represented in everything, not just in a, a gallery. And uh, what about the people that can't access this Manchester Museum? Brilliant space. But what about those people? It has, to be, it has to be a ripple effect where it changes everywhere else. Required. We, we, we had a terminology document, so we come into this process and there's these words that I don't understand. It's museum language. Let's just get rid of that. So we created this terminology document that had real language in there and I mean that's that's where the divide happens where you know we speak this special language and we'll speak to you in this other language and, and even when there's so many times when I had to correct people when they said the community and I'm like it's not the community it's our community <laughs> regardless of what colour you are that is our community and um, breaking down the language and then 
taking the co-curators to do research visits, they knew they didn't want that. They wanted to, they wanted to talk about dark histories. They didn't want to gloss over it. They didn't want to have a Carty Roach, but everything else, you know, really beautiful and nice, and put people coming out and saying, "Wow, that was good." But they wanted, like you, they wanted you to think about your history and the impact of colonial and the impact that it's had today. At his display and passports. Why we didn't just land here is, mm. you know, there's a story behind that. Mm. People need to know why there's so many South Asians in the UK and in Manchester, and we wanted to tell those stories, but not why we're here today, but where it all came from. But tell it in a, a, a true light, like the exploitation yeah. case. Mm -hmm. you know.